All right, so we just got everything backed in here. You can see there's a little clay coming back here. There's a steep angle, which you really can't tell maybe on film here, but uh, it was a little tricky. Got everything in, so next thing we're gonna do is unload all our equipment here. We're gonna get started in a couple minutes. So the first thing I need to do before we do anything is I need to pop these doors off the uh, tracks and I'm gonna put clamps underneath. So you're gonna see me do that really quick. So now we have a clamp at the bottom of each door here. It holds it about an inch off the floor. So that's gonna stop the door from getting in the epoxy today after we get our first coat down. Okay, so we're all set up here. So there's our vacuum system, our hose, and that goes into our grinder, and our generator's parked outside. So we're all set up. We're gonna get going here in a couple seconds. I'll put you on time lapse so you can see what we're doing here. Okay, so we're done grinding with the big grinder. We encountered some very hard concrete. So, um, and kudos to the finisher, by the way. This was a really nice hand troweled floor. They did a great job. You see the diamonds on here? These are the orange, um, I'm sorry, the yellow diamonds. They actually look orange, but these are yellow for the hardest concrete there is. Um, and this barely cuts this. This is really good hard concrete. But you can see the cross sections of stone in here. Um, reach down in, you want a, a good scratch on the floor so the epoxy bites onto it. So the next thing we're going to do is the edges. Um, there's a crack that we have to fill, which right now it's underneath the vacuum. You can see the crack there. So we're going to fill that. Then we're going to uh, hand grind that after we fill it. Then we're going to put the prime coat down and then we're done. So I'm gonna repair these cracks really quick here. Well, there's only one crack right behind me. I think you can see that. I kind of showed you earlier, but it's, I don't know, maybe eight feet long. I'm gonna fill it before I start edging, and then by the time I make my way around, this will be set, and I can grind over it. It'll be a nice, smooth repair. Here's our part A and B. Mark my lines on my squeeze bottle here. This is a one to one ratio. Again, you have about 45 seconds or a minute when you mix this stuff. Put it in, shake it. I'm going to start down here. I might be out of range a little bit here. I'm coming right back. So the idea is not only to fill these, but overfill them 
and then we're going to come back with the grinder and you grind off the top excess epoxy and then put your floor right over it and you'll never know it was there. So yeah, this stuff, and I'm actually showing this now, sets up so fast. See this stuff now, it's actually setting up in mid-air. I'm just trying to get this right at the front lip there. We are good. Yeah, so this stuff set already. Yeah. The concrete we have is okay. good and hard, that's for sure. Okay, so now we repaired that crack. We're getting ready to do the edges. So we're going to uh, fire up the generator, grind everything, and then we're gonna put the prime coat down. I'm just gonna go out here, I'll fire this thing up. Show you how our generator runs. Turn that on. There's like a uh, 10 second delay on this, but that'll fire up. And then we're good to go. Okay, so we're done with the edging. I just want to show a close up. This is the concrete, it's all ground. I have exposed stone all over the place. Now we have to vacuum the whole floor. So there's like a fine dust on the floor yet. All the edges are done in detail. We're going to clean up and get ready for the prime coat. Okay, we're back. Just a quick recap here. Everything is ground all the way up to the edge. A couple spots here I ground a little heavier by hand just because the concrete was so hard there it was hard to get a scratch in it. So if you look real close here, you can see the scratch in the concrete. That's what you want for this epoxy to bite onto. So everything has been ground. There's a closet here we're going in that also. That's it, so I'll put you on uh, time lapse so you can see this primeness. Okay, so now we got done with the prime coat. Close the doors, they're about an inch up. So we're set for the day. We'll be back tomorrow, day two, to do the intermediate coat and flakes. Thanks for tuning in, we'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, folks. We are back day two. Uh, we installed the prime coat. I'm walking around on the floor right now. We had a couple of bugs come in last night, which for whatever reason, bugs love epoxy. So we're gonna sweep the bugs off quick. They're just laying on top. They couldn't make it in as far if it was still wet. They'd be stuck to the perimeter. So we're gonna clean up the bugs, get ready for our second coat. We're gonna uh, broadcast the flake in there and uh, I'll set you up to see that in a couple minutes. Okay, folks, we're all set here. We uh, cleaned up all the random bugs that somehow migrated in there overnight. So we have our 18 inch roller ready. We use a 24 inch squeegee. By the way, this squeegee 
we use a gray squeegee blade because the black leaves black marks on the floor depending on what you're going over. We have our spike shoes. These are the spikes we use. And we have our flake in a bucket. This is the color, by the way, this is a B104 caribou color. We have our six inch whizzer and a brush. Our mixing station. This is the material we're using. So we're gonna get set up right now and start putting this down. Okay, I just want to show some real time. This is, uh, Jeff is back rolling this now. So we squeegeed this, we did all the edges with the brush and then a six inch um, roller. So Jeff is back rolling this. You can just see kind of the light reflection as he back rolls this. This is all just to get it good and consistent. And as soon as he's done with that, I'm gonna start flaking. I'll have this on time lapse. We'll come back to real time a little bit when I flake this, so you can see how that goes. Um, we got everything out there. This closet has been back rolled already, so I'm going to have to flake back there. And you can see our edges were tight up against the wall with the epoxy. You can even see that this was not back rolled yet, but it was edged. You can see that six inch path where we edge. So this will all be nice and consistent before we flake. All right, so we just got done flaking the floor. I'm going to uh, give you a little close up just so you can see what that looks like. Okay, so this is what we have over the whole floor. There's a drain right in the middle. So tomorrow morning we're gonna come in, we're gonna vacuum any of this excess flake off, make sure there's no sharp pieces sticking up. We're gonna put our clear coat on and then we're done. Welcome back folks, this is day number three. I'm now walking around on our floor. We're getting ready to do the clear coat. Look, we had a couple leaves blow in. I just have to suck them up quick. We're walking around on special shoes that don't need prints on the floor. So we're just gonna vacuum the edges and wherever we have some extra flake. And then we're going to uh, apply our polyasparta clear coat. All right, folks, we're all set up here. We hung some plastic on these doors, not really for rain. They're not calling for any rain. However, these beautiful trees behind me drop a lot of leaves. So leaves are pretty on the trees, but not on a new floor. So we're all set up. I'm gonna put you on time-lapse here and you can watch us do the uh, polyaspartic clear coat. All right, folks, we just got done. Polyaspartic supplied. I can't walk out there because this stuff is wet. 
get over all shot. We have our plastic hanging on the doors now. We're gonna drop the doors to protect this floor until this stuff sets. Thanks for tuning in.